Here we are with Thurston County Connections. I'm Commissioner Gary Edwards from District 2, and we're here at the main county shop. We're going to look at the activities that take place here at the shop, and then we're going to go out on the site and see in practical experience how they function every day, uh, trying to do the best job they can and save you tax dollars at the time. So let's go take a look. Hi, I'm Gary Edwards, a Thurston County Commissioner from District 2, and I'm here with Brian Hank, and uh, we're going to talk about ER&R, and I'll let Brian explain what ER&R is and how it benefits Thurston County citizens. Well, good morning. Uh, thanks for being here, Commissioner. Uh, ER&R Fleet Services, we are a staff of 14. Uh, we uh, maintain and service the county's equipment, about 640 pieces of equipment. Uh, that consists of light duty vehicles, uh, heavy uh, road construction equipment, heavy duty trucks, uh, and then a myriad of other small assets, so specialized equipment and trailers and, and whatnot. Uh, we have a staff of 14. We have a central stores uh, department. Uh, that manages the fuel for the county. We uh, use about 250 to 300,000 gallons of fuel a year. Uh, so they manage the fuel. They manage a parts inventory of about 1,400 lines. That's about 38,000 parts and materials and supplies that we issue to the county, uh, our county customers, which is the departments and the, uh, uh, the elected offices. Uh, we have uh, mechanics. We have seven mechanics, we have a fleet operations crew chief, uh, and they do the preventive maintenance services and maintain the equipment. We also uh, uh, do our own upfitting for our new equipment purchases. Uh, we, we replace about 70 to 100 pieces of equipment a year on the uh, current replacement cycles uh, so that we that can keep good uh, serviceable equipment that's reliable uh, here you know, for the county. Um, so we do, we do all of our own upfitting. Um, we also support 18 uh, outside agencies within the other county agencies within the county, like the fire departments and police departments. Uh, we do some uh, maintenance on those. Uh, we have, for example, we have uh, West Thurston Fire uh, vehicle in now for upfit. Uh, and then we have a, a maintenance or a radio shop that does radio uh, programming. Uh, they also do the light bar programming, controller programming on the police vehicles. Uh, so they we also support the uh, county agencies uh, with the, the radio programming and maintenance as well. So we have 18 external customers uh, uh, in addition to the county departments. About how many pieces of rolling stock, or, or I guess just stock that you maintain some of it might not be rolling there could be other equipment we have a total of 640 pieces of equipment uh, about half of that is light duty vehicles sedans and pickups uh, to include the the sheriff's department's patrol vehicles and, and sedans uh, and then about half of it is the road construction equipment and the heavy duty trucks uh, and then other specialized equipment and trailers sounds like in the long run uh, people might wonder, you know, not knowing what goes on, but it sounds like it's pretty complicated. And uh, in the long run, you're actually saving us money by all the coordination you do, and uh, and then helping other other entities out as well. So you're saving them money as well through a scale of uh, activity. And I, I don't know exactly how it breaks down, but. There's a, there's a lot that goes into the, the fleet services and what we do here. Uh, you know, we, we try to focus on a, a comprehensive uh, preventive maintenance program, uh, which uh, allows us to, you know, make sure that the equipment is safe. 
uh, by doing the periodic uh, inspections uh, and maintained well so that we prevent catastrophic component failure, uh, which uh, you know saves us money sure. uh, in, in that aspect. But also it makes sure that our customers have the equipment when they need it uh, and it's reliable and, and dependable. Uh, and I, I guess I'd just point out we had a very severe storm here. Uh, just a few days ago and it's nice to have the ability to call on the equipment that you need to deal with a particular problem and have it up and running and ready to go at all times. Yes, that is correct and we we take our job very seriously because of that. You know, our, our mission is uh, to, bro to provide quality uh, uh, fleet services uh, to our county, you know, customers um, and uh, you know Whenever an event like that happens, uh, we're we're prepared to do what it takes to, to support them and to make sure that that equipment is ready uh, and available. One of the uh, other significant uh, initiatives that we have uh, is, you know, in our procurement, our vehicle replacement uh, program. Uh, we set a life cycles on equipment to where we're replacing at the optimal economic replacement point which means that our cost uh, for maintenance and operation and depreciation is the lowest uh, and our return on the investment when we resell is at the highest uh, and we replace it uh, before our maintenance and operation costs start to, to go get higher and cost us more money. So I, I um, guess what, what you're saying is that even though something might reach a certain age, yet it's in extremely good condition hasn't been a maintenance problem. You might hold it over for a while until you get a balance there uh, we, and, and save it again. Save taxpayers money. That's right. We do have a process for that. We we uh, do what's called a life cycle cost analysis on the equipment before we replace it, uh, and if uh, it's met its life cycle that we've set for it, and we think that uh, we can uh, get a couple of more years out of it, we'll do what's called a point assessment. Uh, it's a formal assessment on it. And then if we determine uh, uh, that we can keep it in the fleet, it's cost effective to keep it in the fleet, we will. And the same thing happens if we have a piece of equipment that's costing us a lot in maintenance. It's just, uh, you know, you get those pieces of equipment that just don't hold up. Uh, Made on Friday or something, huh? We continually, <laughs> that's right. We continually assess those, uh, you know, our equipment to make sure that we're replacing it at the, at the optimal time, uh, you know, in the most cost effective uh, time. Um, right. So the, one of the other things that we do for procurement is we maximize uh, purchasing cooperatives like the uh, state master contract, uh, the NJPNA, National Joint Powers Alliance, uh, the Houston Galveston Association uh, procurement, and other interlocal agreements that we have so that we can maximize our purchasing power. Uh, and what that's allowed us to do is to come in uh, several hundred thousand dollars below our budget authority that we're given each year to replace uh, the equipment with. And that saves, uh, saves the county money. Great. Uh, one other uh, area that we're really proud of is we've recently uh, was uh, given in-house warranty privileges from Ford and GM. Uh, what that means is we can do uh, a lot of the in-house uh, or a lot of the uh, warranty work in-house on our GM and Ford vehicles and it saves us time in delivering and, and picking up the vehicles at the dealership uh, and it gives, gives us the ability to get our equipment back to our customers quicker. And I suppose you yeah. folks had to do some pretty extensive training to get those entities to buy off on you being able to fix their product, so to speak. That's correct. They actually come in and do an evaluation of our uh, shops and our, our facility and, and how we do business. Uh, and we have to meet certain training requirements uh, in, in order to you know, get those privileges and maintain them. Uh, so you know, we have really good uh, technicians here, uh, very well trained, uh, you know, very good at what they do. Uh, and they're committed and they're proud of what they do and they, and they you know, I, I couldn't ask for a better staff. I guess what that boils down to is, like, you're saving the customer time, time is money, and the taxpayers get the break, right? That's right. That's right. right. I, I guess you'd probably have some background in this type of activity from your military days on, on keeping equipment up and running and ready to go. 
I do. I, I uh, was in the fl uh, fleet services in the military for 28 years. I was uh, uh, retired as a chief warrant officer for uh, a, a senior ordnance logistics officer, and basically we're the, the, the residents, uh, special ex experts for the military uh, for the tactical fleets. So we maintain and, and administer the, the fleet programs for the tactical fleets for the, for the Army. Well, I think uh, the taxpayers ought to be tickled to death that you're here working for Thurston County, and I want to thank you for your service to the country as well. So uh, really looking forward to spending a little time with you and figuring out all the things that I don't understand yet that you're right. going to help me understand. Great. Well, it was, it's, uh, you know, it was a privilege for me to serve my country, and it's a privilege for me to continue to serve the public with Thurston County, and I'm, I'm grateful for, for this opportunity. And I suppose if I mentioned you probably are not a native here to Washington State, you could at least tell us we've got, you do have a bit of an accent. You know? uh, just a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I'm originally from Oxford, Mississippi, uh, North Mississippi. Uh, I, I was born and raised there, uh, but at, at 17, right out of high school, I joined the military. I, I traveled around the world uh, in the military, so I, I like to think I got a little bit of, of every, everywhere in me. Well, we're uh, glad to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. Here we are in Central Stores, and Bruce is going to fill us in on exactly how his shop operates and save the, saves the taxpayers a lot of money. So this is the Central Stores operation. Central Stores supports the parts purchasing for the vehicle maintenance, as well as public works and some supplies for the sheriff's office for the units out on the road to keep them up and operational. Uh, in addition to my role in Central Stores, we have the Fuel Island, which dispenses both diesel and unleaded, over uh, 250,000 gallons a year. And so we both keep the tanks full and make sure that vehicles are accurately recording their fuel usage in our uh, electronic uh, fleet information management system. We also do the Voyager card billing, so that's uh, credit cards that are used to purchase fuel out in the local area for, uh, for people who are out on the go and need fuel immediately without coming back here to the Tilly campus campus. Mm -hmm. In addition to the central store supervision, I am also the fleet analyst. So part of that is looking at uh, key performance indicators for fleet operations as a whole. So looking at ways both to make our operation more efficient, uh, decrease the turnaround time on vehicle repairs to keep vehicles operational and out on the road, and um, still maintaining uh, customer service. Right. Also looking at uh, vehicle costs when it's time to replace them, doing the analysis to see if it's better to keep repairing the vehicle for a few more years or if it's time to go ahead and purchase new equipment and get the benefits of both lower maintenance costs and more efficient equipment and modern equipment. Bruce, I understand that uh, you've got a little bit of military background here that uh, gives you some experience in what you're doing today, is that right? Yes, I retired from the military a little over a year ago where I was involved in maintenance management as well. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you for your service to the country, and we're tickled that you're here with us in Thurston County now helping us out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here we are in a heavy maintenance shop at Thurston County and uh, just want you to know we've got these safety glasses on so we meet all the requirements while you're in the shop. One of the big components of county government is to have safe operation. I'm here with Doug and Brian and they're going to explain a little bit about what goes on here in the main shop. I'm Brian Newby. I'm the Fleet Operations Crew Chief for Thurston County. We're here in the heavy vehicle maintenance shop where we take care of all, primarily the public works, uh, roads department, all their heavy equipment. Um, our primary goal here is to maximize the readiness of all of the equipment, also make sure that we have a low return rate for repairs, 
and to reduce the cost for preventive maintenance services and to uh, make sure that we get the most out of our life cycle on each one of our pieces of equipment. We do that primarily through scheduled preventive maintenance services. We also do that through uh, oil sample analysis to make sure that we're capturing problems before they actually create a uh, catastrophic failure with the equipment and to uh, reduce our servicing costs. Um, we run this shop here with, there's four technicians that are on the floor. Uh, Doug Baldwin is the uh, heavy lead here for the shop. Mm -hmm. And Doug? Uh, Doug Baldwin, heavy lead. Uh, my job mainly is to uh, schedule and keep the workflow going through the shop with the, keep the mechanics and technicians busy. Uh, uh, help them out with any kind of service needs as far as manuals or parts uh, requests and also work on, on the floor to keep things flowing. Um, mainly the day-to-day -day operations, we get, keep everything working through here. So included in part of our program is we do a predictive maintenance program. The predictive maintenance program is, allows us to work closely with the operators uh, to identify uh, any failures or anything that we see that potentially uh, cause the equipment to have increased downtime. So some of our predictive maintenance failures are our seasonal checklists. When we go from uh, winter season into summer season, we take all that equipment that we use during the winter season out of service. We have a deliberate process of making sure that each one of those pieces of equipment has a, uh, a, com a, uh, a seasonal changeover. So taking the de-icing equipment out, we make sure all that equipment is properly flushed, properly serviced, and then parked or rested for the rest of the season until it's needed again. Um, and then when we deliberate go into the paving season uh, for the roads department, which is really one of our heavier times for them, um, again, we're making sure that all that equipment is inspected prior to going into use to make sure that it is maximized for their uptime. vehicle shop and uh, Brian's going to explain to us what goes on in this operation and I see that we've got a vehicle here that apparently belongs to one of the fire services that you're going to do some work on right? Yes sir so part of the uh, the job that we do here in the light vehicle shop besides maintaining all the county's admin vehicles and the lighter fleets uh, from one ton on down uh, we do upfits, so we do new vehicle setups. So part of the new vehicle setup process is when we order a new emergency services vehicle, such as this one here, which belongs to West Thurston Fire Department, um, that vehicle requires emergency lighting, radios, um, and specific systems to go inside to help with the communications for the department. On this vehicle here, we're putting on a uh, new light bar, new radio columns in the center. We're installing new under lighting, as well as 110 uh, breakaway uh, charging capability so that vehicle can stay plugged in and the uh, communications iPad can stay on all time. Okay. So we do this also for the Sheriff's Department as well. Um, when, anytime that we order a new vehicle, we order it as best we can uh, with what's available from the manufacturer so we can keep a lot of the stuff underneath the manufacturer's warranty. But some of the stuff that we um, have to install, it has to be installed by us. And sometimes it might be unique to the particular jurisdiction and what their needs are? Absolutely, absolutely. And then we also take each one of those vehicles and some of them are uh, specific, whether it's K-9 or dive uh, or the boat team, we set them up to that individual deputy as well because those, the deputies carry around a lot of their equipment in their vehicle with them all the time. Great. Here we are in the radio shop and Kevin's going to give us a little tour here internally of what his job consists of. Kevin? All right. Good morning. Uh, here at the radio shop, we're capable of listening and monitoring uh, and testing uh, law enforcement and public works equipment. From here, I can, I can look at our infrastructure uh, and talk through it and our base stations. Uh, something else that we do here is uh, uh, work on radios and most of it is programming and I have a little uh, a project I'm working on here and this is the uh, Thurston County Sheriff's Department. This is our new radio equipment. I'll power one up for you. We have put the shiny badge oh, in there yeah, sure. and <clears throat> uh, I have this hooked to my service monitor so I can show you real quick uh, what we can do here. So from here Looking at this, get over here. Oh, 
0.800, there we go. From here we can test a radio transmitter and its receiver. So we can look at the scale here. Test one, two, three, you can see the modulation. We can take a look at frequency. We can adjust, we can take a look at the power output. We can also, over here, generate a signal and we can check the radio's receiver sensitivity. And so this is everything this radio can do, I can measure with this piece of equipment. And then is this also uh, the shop where the radios are installed and the different vehicles around the country? Uh, most of the installs are done by the mechanics. I set the radios up, wire the electronics, uh, the, the package up. Uh, these radios come with some assembly required uh -huh. and then I program them and, and get all the, the functions into the radio for, uh, to make them user friendly. And then um, <clears throat> uh, I, I program that and test them. And okay. uh, some other things I do here, uh, I have another little piece of test equipment set over here that this is an antenna analyzer. And I have this hooked to, that's Public Works, uh, I have it hooked to one of my outside antennas that I use to test with. And I can take this up to a tower site and connect to an antenna and I can see exactly where that antenna is working okay. and how well it's working. I can also test feed line losses and all sorts of other fun stuff. Uh, I just know there's different frequencies. In Radios is all there, right. you, you've got you've got the majority of it. Uh, we look at a or I look at a vast variety of equipment, and some of it being upwards of 20 years old or more. Mm -hmm. So I have, as you see, I've got a couple of different computers here, starting with this one back over here in the corner, which is an old tough book with Windows 95 on it. Which I don't use the Windows 95. I program radios like this one with DOS. So <clears throat> this computer, its sole purpose is just DOS. And then... And that's an acronym that means something to somebody, I take it. Uh, well, DOS is what was the, uh, the operating system back in the 80s. Okay. Okay. When Bill Gates come on, that's, that's what he started with, was <laughs> okay. DOS. Uh, and then over here behind you is a, uh, a laptop that I got about four years ago. And you see here is a, uh, just a screenshot of some of the frequencies and, uh, and tone information that are in. Okay. This is uh, for uh, Olympia Fire Department, which I'll be going there today. Uh, and that goes into a radio like this. And so I, I got a replacement for that computer, and that's this one over here. But the operating system in this computer was so fast that I couldn't run that program. So I have to use that computer to do some of the, the antiquated stuff building up to this. And so uh, I've got about two dozen radio programs. I deal with three or four different uh, types of radios. And one other thing I wanted to show you is our public works is over here on that computer. Oh, yeah. Taking a look at this screen here. This is our AVL, which is our automatic vehicle locator. Okay. So, uh, Public Works uses this to see where the fleet is. And this gives us some basic information as to speed, direction, uh, and location. And I can also tell from this when a radio keys up and when it turns on and when it turns off. It, it's helped us a couple of times in locating vehicles that have been rolled over. Oh. Okay. that they didn't have enough signal to get out, but we could see where the vehicle was. Uh, there's been a couple of vehicles that have been stolen that we've been able to locate with this. Yeah. It's a very useful tool in the public works environment. Well, thanks very much, Kevin. My pleasure. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are out at a construction site out on uh, Old 99 between Tumwater and Tenino. And Terry Roberts is going to fill us in on what's going on here as a follow-up from our shop activity. 
So the past couple days we've been out here, we're doing uh, what we call dig outs and they're mill and fills. What we do is we, we have a rental grinder, which you can see behind us. What he does is he grinds down two and a half inches, especially with old Highway 99, you have a, a asphalt base of about 10 inches of asphalt. So you do not want to grind all the way down. So we take it down two and a half inches down to where the cracks no longer exist. And then we fill it with asphalt. And then come July, we'll have our contractor come in here and uh, chip seal everything. And you'll notice that uh, safety is a big issue out here on the work site as well as over at the county shop. And so you'll see that uh, we've got a pilot truck going by leading people through. Uh, there's a deputy sheriff parked up here just being aware that uh, to keep people from overreacting because oftentimes during these construction periods uh, there's aggravation, people don't understand exactly what's going on and we're really hoping that you, the motoring public, will understand that this is a heavy time for construction and the county employees are out here doing the best they possibly can and we would hope you would recognize this from a safety perspective and help us keep these folks safe. Thank you. Our, our biggest thing is we're trying to keep the, uh, the, our road crew and the public safe. So just be patient out here. Um, we do have a lot of pieces of equipment out here. We, we do have uh, a pilot car that we run on these uh, mainline roads like Old Highway 99. We do have uh, a wait for pilot car signs in every driveway. So the biggest thing is be patient. Watch out for our guys on the ground. Watch out for our equipment. We don't want anybody you know, running into the back of them. Uh, also, when pilot, fo following the pilot car, just uh, have a safe, clear distance from each one of the, uh, the vehicles in front of you and, and behind you. We don't want any wrecks out here. Thank you very much, Jerry. All right. Thank you. We've been at the shop, so you had a good understanding of the maintenance and the overall operation in the shop, especially when it comes to this heavy equipment. And now you've got the heavy equipment on site doing a road repair here on Old 99. Thank you very much for joining us here on Thurston County Connections. tcmedia.org for scheduling information for this and other local programs on demand about our community. TC Media, it's local.